things of God. They're eternal. They will last. They will last. The things that deserve. Things we're looking for. We try to think of success. When we look at the world and the gold and the money and the houses, the things are in God. Them things will last. Them things will last. Amen. Did you enjoy that? Amen. Nothing more precious than Jesus. Amen. Thank God for that. Well, we've come tonight to church. I hope you got your Bible. And uh, we're going to have some preaching. So that's what you'll need is your Bible. And uh, and so get, go ahead and get your Bible. Right? Raise it up above your head. Raise it up above your head. There you go. All right, good. We're going to use this tonight. Uh, Pastor Philip Youngblood from Cooper's Creek Baptist Church is going to be bringing the message to us. So I want you to give him your undivided attention. You come on this way, preacher. And uh, as soon as you're ready, you can preach for us. Uh, with the answer to this. 
I want to ask you, if you was able to ask God any question, if you were able to ask God any question in the world, what would the question be? Y'all help me with that. I want you to think about that for just a minute. Anybody want to help me? If you was to ask God any question, if you could, if he was here tonight, you could ask him a question, what would that question be? Brother Robert can read your mind, but he's being quiet back there. Amen. <laughs> what, what was it? Yes, sir. What was it? Finding, asking God what the will for your life is. That's a question, right? Ask my daddy that same question, and he said it something like this. Miss Canessa re upped it. And they asked the question, why? The question would be something like this, God, why? Why did you pick me? Why would you allow me to be saved? Why, why would you select me out of everybody in the world? Why would you, why? Right? Right. Anybody else? Shay, what do you got? What? How many people are in heaven? That's good. God could answer that question, but all right, what you got? God truly loves everybody. You know the answer to that? All right, what is it? Yes. Yeah, sure he does. How do you know that? Did you hear what she said? Because the Bible says he loves everybody. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. At some point. Oh, hey, like that. How many grains of sand is on the sea? Wow, on the shore. Hey, man, that's good. Anybody else got any questions that they would like to ask God? Yes, sir. Are you there? Chapter number two. 
of the book of Genesis and verse number 7. The Bible says, what's the first word? Amen. And, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Amen. So what did God create man out of? Dust. dust. All right. Who created the dust? God did, right? You said, how do you know? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth is our form board. We go on and on and on, right? Now, now go back to chapter number one and look down with me in verse number 26. Notice it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. Is that what it says? Amen. Our being who? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. In our image. So let me say something to you tonight when finding the will of God for your life. Why do I look the way that I do? Why am I this tall? Why? 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 Well, well, the reason why is because God made you according to His pattern right. Amen. Himself. Amen. And you say, well, why would that be, preacher? Well, I, I believe it's kind of like this. God knew what He's doing, and so therefore God wanted, God wanted to be within His creation, desiring to have something that He could enjoy eternity with. Right. Someone, if I, if I can clear that up. Now look at verse, uh, now look at this. Now notice what man is supposed to do. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, and over the, all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him. Notice this right here, please, very closely. Male and female. Did you know that you right. cannot have another male or female without a male or a female? Amen. Say amen. 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 I don't care what the tell you at the schoolhouse. Amen. It takes a male and it takes a female. Amen. amen. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, praise God. I'm going to get right. I ain't got time for this for Georgia, man. I'm working on you. All right. Look at verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. Now, what type of human did God create? Now, I want you to think about this. Now, in the schoolhouse, they teach you that this, when, whenever humans evolved and these things happen, they need to mess them out. Somebody was telling me, some of these young people were telling me that they don't even teach evolution anymore. That they've gotten to the place where that's, they debunked that one and they're on to something else. Okay, so let me say this to you. What type of man, uh, what type of human did God create? Do y'all believe that God created man in an ignorant state? By ignorant, I mean this. I mean that man was rubbing two sticks together and didn't know that they were sticks. Man was trying to light his own fire and looked like a bunch of cavemen. That doesn't seem to be the picture that we find in Genesis chapter number one. Right. No, that, that's totally out of whack because in Genesis chapter number one, God breathed in the man's nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Somebody say amen right amen. Okay, and so with that, God put an intelligent design within man. He didn't start out as a baby. He started out as a grown man. Right. Without a belly button. Right. Now, amen. You say, how do you know he had a he didn't have an ability for it, amen. Right. He was created. God breathed in his nostril, brother, by being king, a living soul. Now, let me say to you also, with that, look at verse number 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, of, the, of every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see um, what he, he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Now, Notice this almost like instantly within the Word of God, we find that God's now got a task for man, and what God wants man to do is He wants man to look at the animal and now ain't name that animal. Have you ever wondered who gave the giraffe its name? I mean, have you ever wondered who gave the worm its name? Have you ever wondered who gave the elephant? Adam did. That's a direct reference to the fact tonight that there is a God in heaven and God created man and Adam's the one that made Have you ever noticed nobody scratches their head and goes, oh, I don't know what that is? Right. God developed that. Amen. God put that there. He put that name in place. Now, the, the 
decision making ability. Now, let's think about this. How many of you believe tonight that you have the ability to make decisions? Raise your hand. You just made them. Right? Every single one of you made a decision to be here. I mean, some of us sports, I will admit. But some made a decision to get on the bus and come. Some people made a decision to get in the car. All of those things, you made a decision. So, can I say that decisions are important, right? Decisions are very important. So, the decision-making ability is what we call free will. Now, I want you to listen close now because this is important. I think that there's been a lot of deception within our churches, within our Sunday school classes, within our in our dealings with each other about this area of free will. So listen very closely. Now, we understand that God created man, and in, in, in other words, free will is the ability tonight to make decisions without pressure or force from any other source. Right. So you have a decision tonight to listen, or you have a decision to tune me out, right? You are making a decision. That's what we call free will. You had the decision to go to McDonald's. You had the decision, I don't like McDonald's, and I'm going to go to Burger King. You had the, that's what we call free will. Right. With that free will, I want to say to you this, it is very dangerous for God to create a, a human and give him free will. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right? Yep. It's very dangerous to do that. You say, why is it so dangerous, preacher? Because here's the thing. God's not going to be able to force the control of that individual because if he does, then he's forcing him to love him. Right. He's for, so in that aspect, you would be no different than a robot. Right. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. I, I see your hand up back here. And Zach, and I got that new baby. Praise God. Now, that baby's not a robot. Nope. No. Uh, if it was, you would program, it when to, when, program her when to cry. You could program her when feeding time was. And you see, yep. we are born with this nature of free will. Right. You come out the womb, amen, it's not long, you're saying, I'm hungry, where? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and and right, sister, amen, hey, that's good. I mean, at any moment tonight, the baby may cry. Right. And this hand's going to have to go do it. That's what we call free will. Now here's the thing with free will. I just said it a minute ago. It's very dangerous for that to happen. You know why? Because the puppet strings are gone. And you don't know what's going to happen. Right. Now, so with free will, so you find God's will for my life. So here's the deal. When it comes to free will, God had to do something to keep us from being in danger, to keep us from being hurt. You know what he did? Anybody got a clue? To keep us from being in danger, to keep us from being hurt because we can make our own decision, this is what God did. God give us his word. Amen. And, this, and his word is this. His word keeps us in check. His word keeps us from falling. His word warns us when we're about to get in trouble. Now, look at this. He could not eliminate, look, when creating it, he could not eliminate free will because here's the deal. If he did, we would be robots. But he did give us this warning. Look at verse 16. And God, and the Lord God commanded the man, say, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of what? Of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely what? Finding God's will for your life. How many believe that making decisions will destroy your puzzle? Amen. Can I say to you tonight that this is real money? This is not something to play with. It's not something to toll with. Because just as sure as I'm standing here, every single one of us have an appointment with this right here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
we have an appointment. It's amazing to me that when it comes to death, you may not have put this up there for me. Y'all do that for me. When it comes to that of death, we want to play around. We want to play, we want to act like there's nothing wrong. But I wonder tonight if there is people in this room. How has death affected you? Anybody? Been affected by death? How does it affect you, Brother Brian? Affected me a lot, my mom. Okay. Grandmother, mama. It's Stephanie. Stage four cancer died last year. Daddy. Mama. Friends. Grandma. Now, wait. We just assume that you know, and I'm telling you something, and some of you, you've got questions in your 
your mind. You're asking this right here. And Satan's already got you some floor of form. You've already made up your mind that there ain't a God. I don't care what anybody says. My, stuff, my science teacher's right. But I'll tell you something. There is a God. And let me come out with this deal. And then let me give you an opportunity to, to answer this question as to why. All right? Look at verse number one, chapter number three. Y'all still with me? Amen. Now the serpent. Now what? Now the serpent was more what? So than any beast of the field. That's what Brother Hall read this morning. Yeah. Any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And, and he said unto the woman, Yea, God had said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden. Uh, and, and the woman said unto the, unto the serpent, Why, why not, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the, of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, uh, neither touch it, lest you die. God didn't tell them whether they touch it. That might be something added, added to it. He said, he said, God said this, the day that you eat of the tree thou up, thou shalt surely die. Right, right. And so she's quoting to, she's quoting to the serpent what God has already said. Right. And she's telling the serpent, this is why we cannot eat of that. Because God said that we're going to be in danger. God said that we're going to die. God, God said that, hey, when I cross this out, I'll never be the same. I cannot do it. Right. Now this is what we don't know. We don't know how long that Eve walked by the tree. Right. We don't know how long it may have looked here. It might have been a week. It might have been a man ten days. I don't know. But I figure it's probably just like you and me. We, we look at sin, we're like, I ain't going to ever get me. Right. How many have ever said, that? I ain't never going to do that. I ain't never. And then the next thing you know, there you are. Right. Amen. Right? Right? right. right. I'd say maybe she'd walk by that tree. She'd go by that tree and say, hey, come over here, man. Let me talk to you for just a second. Adam's down there doing something, man. Let's come over here, let me talk to you. See, my, I don't know if you know this, but I'm going to see my brother right back. Some of them seem like Adam was somewhere else whenever she had been. I don't, I don't know that. It right. does seem like she was being lured. One day she came by and he said, Look, it ain't that bad. It ain't way bad. You, you, you're just missing the goodness of it. You ever notice that sin always looks good from the outside? Yeah. You're right. You ever notice, young people, every single time that your friends invite you to do something wrong, they make it seem awesome in the minute. Right. But afterwards it feels like doo doo. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just feel ugh, like trash. You have to get up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, amen. amen. I say, Brother Hall, when they get that thing off, she says, Man, it does look good. I wish she might carry it around a little bit. Man, she says, Wow. I wonder what it tastes like. Yeah. She said, Man, I don't put plug it now. I might as well try it. Uh, right. She dove them teeth into it. Yeah, sure. And she ate it. And then she began to go tell her husband, You believe it. This is good. He ate it. Yeah. We was talking to somebody this morning about this. Somebody told me today, uh, you know, the Bible said, The day that you eat the tree thereof, thou shalt surely die. They didn't die physically that day. But they did die. Yeah, right. When you plant sin, sin in your life, yep. don't look at the day. Look at what it's going to do down the road. Right. 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 I want you to ask you this question. How many wishes that they could go back and help Eve on the decision that she made in the garden? Raise your hand. And put your hand back there. How many lives with some type of pain tonight? Amen. You've got some type of pain. Amen. How many of you tonight know that depression is a real thing? Can I tell you that was a result of that decision? I believe tonight that verse 6 says, And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eye of the tree. Be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it also to her husband 
with her, and he did eat. And, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which, of which I commanded thee, say, Thou shalt not eat of it, talk of it. Curse it. Listen to this. Curse it is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat. Now look here. So what is death? Death is a product of man's disobedience to God's word. Death is a product of that. Now my question to you tonight is simply this. Uh, what in the world are you going to do about it? I want to ask you this. From, from the moment uh, that man sinned, it was because man disobeyed God. Right. Elijah, if, I, if you was on top of the roof tonight, I'd say don't do it, don't jump, you're going to break a leg. You can, you can lose your life if you jumped off the top of the roof. If you chose to disobey me, you can die or break a limb from jumping off the roof. There is consequences to what God has said. Danger. Don't do it. Now let me ask you a question. We get pretty hard on Adam and Eve, but let me ask you this. Why do you see it? Would you say that raping tonight, rape, stealing, theft, I mean, I'm talking about, look here, homosexuality, I'm talking about addictions, all of those things are based from one decision right here in the garden. We are all products tonight born into this thing called sin. Let me talk about that for just a minute. Did you know that every single one of us were born into sin? That you, when you were born, when your mom and daddy had you, I, I hate to say it, sister, that name is cute, that baby is beautiful, but she is born into sin. And there's going to be a day when she reaches the years of accountability that she's going to need to make a decision, that she's going to need to make a choice. And sister, this is the hardest part, that you, you brother Zach, can't, can't make that decision for her. Right. Your, your daddy can't make that decision for her. Right. Amen. You say, why, preacher? Free will. Right. You all make a decision. And if God was to do it, God can save everybody in the world tonight, but this is what he's done. He stepped back and he said, I've done something for you, and if you'll accept me, this is what's going to take place. I will give you everlasting life with me in heaven, but if you don't, okay, that's all right. I don't want to force you into it. You make your own decision. There is going to be consequences. Right. Amen. Hmm. You say, well, some of you are dealing with this tonight. Why would God let my loved one pass away? Yeah. Some of y'all are dealing with this. Why did God not heal my loved one? Right. Right. Lazarus, when he died, y'all know the story. Most of y'all know the story of Mary and Martha Lazarus. When, whenever Lazarus died, Mary said, if you'd have been here, my brother would have died. Right. But God had a plan for Lazarus God had a plan for Mary, and God had a plan for Martha. Right, right. Finding God's will for my life. Right. And what was Mary's idea, and what Martha's idea was, was not God's idea. Right. Amen. And, and so, with this thing, could, let me ask you this question. How many believe that God can heal? I'll be shocked, right? Amen. Yeah. I mean, God takes the eyes of blind modern man and see raised the dead. I mean, we, we see the evidence all by the word of God that God does those things. Right. But your question is, why did not God not do it for me? Right. The Bible said this, and I'm going to close with this. The Bible says that it was once appointed unto man a time to die. You know, the, the, the rest of that, that portion of Scripture says this, and after this, the judgment. I cannot control what I'm at. What you think about that? I cannot control when I'm at. You don't know when you're going to die. I'm not trying to scare you tonight. I'm talking about decisions. You don't know when you're going to die. I don't know when I'm going to die. I have no control over my man. 
That's in God's hands. But I do have control over this. The judgment. Your judgment can be awesome. Or your judgment can be horrible. I'm going to try to hit you here. We will be done. There is a cure for this world's curse. And that cure is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Bible said this, Romans chapter number 6, verse 23. Don't help me out. For the what? What is a wage? The payment for the wages of what? Decision, wrong decision. For the payment of sin is what? Y'all said it. You mean to tell me that the one thing that the devil brought into the world, dead? The one thing that got the devil brought here, that dead? You're telling me that that's going to be the way, that's going to be the payment? That's what you're saying? For the wages of sin is dead, right? But what? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what? It's amazing to me tonight that we don't ever, when somebody dies in our house, when somebody dies in our family, we don't ever go, you know what? I'll tell you right now, we, we'll, automatically we do this. God, why in the world would you let my soul and so die? Oh God, why in the world would you? Listen, it, it ain't God's fault. Why don't you blame that stinking devil that's in the tree that put that bed down to begin with, friend? Why don't you go back up by that tree and you tell a stinking devil, hey, look here, you've had enough of my life. You're not going to break my puzzle apart. God has something for me. The pieces are going to come together. And I want God Almighty to do something with me. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I tell you tonight when I look at the cross of Galway, this is what I see. I see the sinless. I tell you the Son of God who came down here. But I listen, I want you to listen close to every single one. One of us was born into sin. Amen. We inherited the sin of Adam. But I'm telling you, there was one tonight that came from glory. Who was the sinless yeah. Son of God. Who yeah. came here. Amen. And died for yeah. me. Amen. Amen. He had no sin in him. Yeah. Could not sin. Amen. Why? Because he had no sin nature. Yeah. Hey, he said, why, well, preacher? His daddy, amen, was the God of heaven. Amen. God, sin is only the God of Son. For God should love the world. And he gave his only begotten God of Son. Now, who's should not perish to have everlasting life. Amen. While the devil in hell and he took, the, took that, that place of the tree, amen, up there in the Garden of Eden, amen, and ruined us with the decision. Right. Jesus went to the cross. Yeah. Right. The devil brought dead. God sent life for him. Amen. 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 And he put him on the tree, amen. And when the Son of God died, this is what he was doing for you and for me. He was paying the payment. Amen. Pay the payment for all of our wrong decisions. Amen. Amen. I tell you tonight, I don't care. If I was going to ever tell you one thing, we're going to stand before God one of these days in the judgment. I'm going to give an account of my life before the Lamb of God. And I tell you, the one thing that I want the world to know is that when I found the Lord Jesus Christ and He found me, amen. And I tell you, my life has been different since that day. Amen. Amen. I'm not the same man that I used to be. Amen. Avery said it best this morning when looking at the puzzle pieces. He said this. He said, look, my life is in the, look, my life of the sinner structure is hinged on salvation. And the first day of my salvation was the first day of my life. Amen. And, and I want you to know this. Your decisions affect who you are and what you become. That's right. I want to see you tonight as you stand. We'll close. I'm going to finish by saying this. And looking at this whole thing, this right here is the key. Right. This right here is the key to your life. You take this one key out, you take Jesus out of your life, you take this one piece out, friend, and the rest of it's not going to make any sense. Right. Amen. There's not going to be no need for witnesses. There's not going to be no need for calling There's not going to be no need for ministry. There's not going to be no prayer line. There won't be any of those say, why? Because there's no salvation. There's no reason. There's no purpose for your life. Right. Amen. Look here tonight. If I ever challenge you with anything. I'm a 43-year-old man. I will tell you tonight, I've been blessed beyond measure. Amen. The things that God's allowed me to do, the things that God's allowed me to see, the things that God's allowed me to have and trust me with, I'm going to tell you, I would go back to that place at seven years old, Brother Hall, and I'd go back and make that decision time and time again. Amen. 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 Now, the things that I've seen God do, look here, I'm just an old country boy, saved by the grace of God, but I, I know this. I mean, when I got saved by the grace of God, and He paid for my sin, something changed in me. Yeah. I'm not the same man that I used to be. Yeah. I'm sick and tired of the devil taking out young people and flushing their lives down the toilets. 
Would you like to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? Would you like to accept the one, the one who paid the payment for your sins? Oh.